Hi, I'm Alex Grieve, better known as IB Crazy, and on the part of the First Person View Fixed Wing Racing Association, I present to you our Spec Race Wing. Start off this build by applying glue to the wing pieces. There should be four pieces in total. Apply a healthy amount of glue to all bonding surfaces and then pull them apart making sure that they're all coated. You will press them back together after you've let them dry for approximately 15 to 20 minutes. You can let it dry as long as six hours and it will still bond properly. Once the glue is dry, simply press the parts back together after aligning them. Once the airplane is completely assembled, then use a good amount of force to solidly press everything together for a final bond. Cut each of your spars into three sections, one 12 inch and two 16 inch rods. The 12 inch rod will go in the back of the plane across the wing. You want it to be about two to three inches back from the rear of the airplane. Simply make a mark and then cut down into the airplane approximately one eighth inch and then embed that cut with glue, then embed your spar. Repeat this procedure on the bottom side of the wing, making sure the spars align directly over top of each other. This forms an I-beam and is incredibly strong. Again, don't cut all the way through the airplane. You only want to go about an eighth inch deep. Embed your glue and then embed your spar. The edge spars on the airplane should be cut to 16 inches long. That should give you four of them total between your two spars that came in the kit. Line them up down the wing section. You want them to protrude a little bit past the battery bay cutout where the airplane is glued. This gives it a little bit of added strength. Then using a straight edge and a knife, cut into the foam again about one eighth of an inch. Then embed your glue into the slot and embed one of your spars. You're going to repeat this procedure for the other side of the wing as well as the bottom of the wing. Be sure that the spars line up one over top of each other. The exact location isn't too critical, but approximately one and a quarter to one and a half inches back seems to be about the best location for them. Cut your spars down to fit the wing profile. I'm cutting mine to 15 inches in length. This will give me plenty of room to clear the six inch prop I'll put on the plane, as well as make it maneuverable for racing. You can make them any size that you want. Smaller is going to be less maneuverable. Larger is going to be a little bit more maneuverable. The next step is laminating the airplane. Place the laminate over either the top or the bottom, and then using a covering iron or a clothing iron set to approximately 240 to 250 degrees Fahrenheit, work from the center of the airplane out towards the tips, stretching the film as you go. I find it's best to start in the middle and work my way towards the edges to avoid wrinkles. Cover the entire airplane, but don't melt the section towards the back of the airplane as this will be used to adhere the elevons. Place the elevon sections up against the beveled cut in the rear of the airplane. Then, pulling your covering tight and folding the elevon down slightly, iron them in place. Do this to both sides. Make sure you have a good bond between the wood and the foam. You also want to be sure you have a good range of motion, making sure the elevons go both up and down. Once ironed on, go ahead and trim off the excess. You'll want to flip the elevon upside down and iron on the bottom side to be sure you have a solid hinge. The motor mount on this airplane is very simple. It's simply a foam block with a wooden block glued to it. Use the adhesive to glue the blocks together and to the airplane. Then, using the motor's X mount, screw the motor into the wooden block on the back. This is plenty secure for even a very, very large motor. I'm using leftover servo screws to screw this in, but any small wood screw will do. Next, put your servos in. I'm moving mine approximately 10 inches down and five inches into the wing from the rear. The location is up to you, but I highly recommend going closer to the middle of the elevon rather than the edge. The reason for this is mounting towards the edge of the elevon can cause flutter at high speeds. 
place your servo where you want it to go, and then simply trace out with a pen or marker. Then take a knife and cut around this area, cutting the inside to make sure the servo fits tightly. Then simply pluck this out with a screwdriver, add glue, and install your servo. Using the control horns as a jig, drill out two holes in each elevon. Then place your control horn over the holes you drilled, press the screws through, and use the white back plate that's mounted on the back of the control horn to secure it. You will want to be sure that these aim down the wing instead of across the wing. This will make sure they're as aerodynamic as possible and that the pool is in the proper direction. The control rods on the airplane are made by simply taking a clevis on either end of a threaded rod. Take a clevis and turn it three or four times onto the threaded rod and then clip it into place in either the servo or the control horn. With the elevon flat on the airplane, use that as a jig to determine the length of threaded rod to cut. You can simply cut it with diagonal cutters as I've done here. Then screw in your clevis and connect so that your elevon is approximately flat with the airplane. The winglets on this airplane are simply glued in place. Use a good amount of glue on the edge of the wing but not the elevon. Then take your winglet, place it in place, then remove it. You'll stick it back on in approximately 20 minutes when the glue is cured. While the battery bay is cut out for you, the receiver, speed control, and video transmitter bays are left up to you. I'm using a hot work tool to take out the sections of foam to put in my speed control and other electronics. However, using a knife and then prying it out with a screwdriver works just fine. These are the approximate locations where most electronics will go and the airplane should still balance properly without any weight.